Hello everybody, welcome to today's episode of the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. Best news of today, Paris-Nice is currently still on. Is it going to be on by the weekend? Oh, it finishes the weekend. But are they going to make it to Nice? Answers on a postcard. In fact, click on the poll. Are the riders going to make it to Nice? We'll get into what's happening in Paris-Nice shortly, but first, let's talk about the story involving Marion Sicard, a relatively unknown rider from France, and her team, Dolcini van Eyck Sport. Now, to get you up to speed on this story, it goes all the way back to June 2019, when Marion Sicard tested positive for EPO at the French National Time Trial Championships. She finished 10th in that, I think, and with most people that have a positive test, she asked for the B sample to be sent off. She pleaded her innocence. B sample came back, tested positive, and then she blamed it on her menstrual cycle. The reason the EPO was elevated within the system was down to her menstrual cycle. In an interview at the end of September of last year, she said that I just want to say that I am innocent. I have nothing to blame myself for. The rate found is very low. During the checkup, I presume the test, I had my period. The checker pointed out to me, by the way, we have our rules, we women, there is more production of EPO. I have never taken anything and I hope the truth will be quickly restored. It is hard because I did nothing. I want to prove it. I even borrow money from my parents because I want to prove my innocence. And pretty much we not heard anything else from the story up until March the 7th when she tweeted this out. After a few months of silence, I can finally reveal my story, which is much more complex than it seems. For that, I invite you to watch the report of stage two, which will be tomorrow, Sunday, March the 8th on France 3 between 8 p.m. and 8.50, and also the interview on France TV. During her TV interview on Stadium 2 on Sunday, she did admit to purchasing EPO and buying 10 vials of the substance through a Chinese website in May 2019. She said she took the drugs on June 24th, and she said that her decision to do so came after months of psychological harassment and abuse from her team director. In the interview, she says, I deserve to have a sanction, but I would like to have a light sentence due to the circumstances with my sports director. It wasn't the real Marion who did that. The TV channel also obtained a series of texts between Marion Sicot and the sports director, Mark Brach, with him requesting front and back photos of her in a bikini so he could, in inverted commas, check her weight. Unbelievably, unequivocally, unacceptable. No two ways about it. It's unbelievable. That team should take the stand and say, Oi, not bad. We're going to investigate this. Go away. You're temporarily suspended until we sort this out. Because allowing him to stay in the team, which we'll find out in a minute, whether they did or they didn't, what kind of message does that say? Like These women, their dream is to become professional cyclists. Their dream is to be at the elite level competing, getting paid handsomely for it. And these sports directors, team management, they essentially hold the keys for somebody's future in cycling. They can make or break a rider. If a rider doesn't toe the line, doesn't do what the DS is asking, regardless of what it is, whether it's right or wrong, then that DS can make sure that they make their lives hell. And the fact that he's saying, listen, this is a secret, just goes to prove that he knew he was in the wrong as soon as he started doing it. So why do it? There's a million and one different ways to ensure somebody's weight. And listen, right, cycling is a game of weight. So this isn't, this isn't about aesthetics and the way you look. This is about being as light as possible to get the best results for the team. So there's no issue in the fact that, you know, he, he potentially might be asking her to lose some weight because she's come to, to training camp a little overweight. No, no problem with that. And that would happen anywhere. But then the way you go about that is, I don't know, a set of scales, body calipers to check body fat. Not indecent pictures. And don't forget, right, this team has an open investigation after two riders made allegations of sexual assault against the Dolcini Van Eyck Soignier. Coincidence? And still, at the time of reporting this, the team haven't made any public statements on this matter. However, they have made a public statement on Facebook about the Marianne Sicot situation. I don't know if they don't have a publicist or they have no idea how PR works but this is officially one of the worst statements I have read from a team. In it, it is nothing more than a scything attack on Marianne Sicot, 
trying to force the blame back onto her. In it, they say her innocence turns out to be one more lie and that there are many girls running for our team, girls that have not been caught doping. You can contact any of them. They will confirm that in our team, there's a very high, not to say perfect, discipline on the field of respecting privacy or sexual abuse, and they will not be lying. Well, if they're not lying, then you've got an issue in the ranks with a Swanier inappropriately touching women. And in the midst of it all is a small reference to sports director Mark Brack. In it, it says, it is in the context that the sport director Mark Brack made the mistake and he doesn't lie about it. He admits it to ask for photos to follow the progression of her condition overweight. This is a practice that was normal in earlier times. Nah, 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 nah. Many people inside cycling know that for f off. No. And it happened far less often than Marion Sicot now claims. If it happened once, if he asked her once for this, that's one too many times. But at no point in this do they mention that they are distancing themselves from Brack until this investigation is finished, until they actually find out the truth behind all this. Leave your thoughts down below on this one. I'm not even going to ask a question to it, just what do you think to it? Well, that is a question, not bad. Should this sports director be suspended, sacked? Of course he should be. That's not, that shouldn't even be a question that you need to answer. But until we get further news on exactly what's happening with the team and how they're progressing with the punishment, and there should be punishment for someone who does that, I guess we'll wait and see what happens. The order of the day on stage two and stage three has been a lot of crosswinds. Stage two once again coming down to a sprint finish. That was won by Nizzolo. He took the victory on stage two. No change really for the general classification men. Stage three once again came down to a sprint. Sagan was up there. Looked like he might be in with the shout of winning after we saw Caleb Ewan go down, Sam Bennett go down. But it was the Spanish rider Cortina who took victory ahead of Sagan in second place. No change really in the general classification. Nizzolo in second, Josper Stoyven in third. Leading the way in the yellow jersey is Max Schachmann. You've got to look down to fifth position for Higita for the real general classification riders. But the question is, is the race going to make it to Nice? Jasper Stoyven doesn't think it's going to be making it all the way to Nice. And he says that 90% of the peloton also think that they're not going to make it to Nice. Leave your comments down below. Do you think that they should just power through regardless of what happens now between now and Nice and they should make it all the way to Nice? Or do you think that the race one should never have gone ahead in the first place or two should be stopped now to um, to save any more spread of the coronavirus? Leave those comments down below. An interesting news coming out of Scotland and one of my favourite brands of all time. Let's make no uh, secret of that. Endura have employed the help of retired sprinter Marcel Kittel to help develop their products. The 30... Blooming hell, 31 and retired, man. Anyway, the 31-year-old said, I'm looking forward to being able to give my experience as a former pro as feedback to create even better riding experience. I like that move. I think it's a good move. I think Marcel Kittel and Endura will make, make a good team. Um, I, listen, I love Endura gear. I can't afford it. But I bloody love it. I've got gear from Endura that is now 10 years old. And it's as good now as it was back then. That's how good their stuff is. That's not paid endorsement. That's just a bloody endorsement. And that's your fill of news for... T oh, one thing I keep, I keep forgetting to do this. But I promised I'd do it. Wait there. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll notice that um, a couple of weeks ago now, I got some, some uh, merch from Kendall Minkate Company. They are a local company to our Cycling Hub office. They sent us down some free products. I just wanted to give them a shout out. That's it. No, no, what I wanted to say is they've basically taken Kendall Minkate, which is essentially what, just a slab of sugar really, and they've produced and developed some amazing exercise-centric nutrition. Don't even know if that's a word. Might have just made that up. But anyway, what I will say is this, chocolate mint protein powder is bloody lovely. Mix it with milk and you have got one of the nicest recovery drinks I have ever had. And one good thing, which I've just realised now because I took some last night. You don't want to know, do you? But listen, some nutritional companies, when I have their protein shakes, a lot of gassiness going on in here, a lot of... But not with that. It's amazing. 
I will, however, say, just for clarity and balance, their Kendall Mint Cake bars aren't the best things to ride with when you're in the Alps in 40 degree heat. If you've not done already, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We finally hit 15,000 subs, so thank you each and every one of you that took the time to hit that subscription button. Really appreciate it. It doesn't go unnoticed, dear. I know it does it a few other channels, but here, it doesn't. And I know we say it really helps the channel out if you subscribe, but it's more of an ego thing, really. It helps us feel good about ourselves, that people will tune in and watch. And it also helps us to go to companies and say, and this is all creators, I've got this many viewers, give me something for free, or give me some dough. So it kind of, it helps the channel in an indirect way. So anyway, listen, appreciate it. If you've disliked the video for whatever reason today, leave your comments down below, let us know why, and um, go 